everyone and welcome back to my channel thank you so much for tuning in sorry i've been gone for so long i'm alive and well thank you <laughs> um just with the holidays and you know traveling back and forth and since i do have a full-time job it does get a little crazy to try to keep up with the videos so i'm sorry about that but i am back and to start off this new year i decided to give silly crafting a brand new logo so here is me as a cartoon <laughs> Um, here on YouTube, uh, this is what I have, and I've had it for two years since I created Silly Crafting. Um, I did it here on Canva just within two minutes. Um, as you could see, the logo is very basic. It's just the name and some scissors. Um, but I've always wanted to do myself as a cartoon. I think they're so trendy and nice and like so beautiful and fun, so why not? And so I did do this with the iPad, and I used the app Procreate. So I'll show you guys how I did that. Here on Canva, once I was done, I uploaded my image, um, which is right here. I deleted the background, and I also just added the background here, and then the name in the front to make it look like a t-shirt. And so that is how I got this brand new logo that you might have noticed here on TikTok. So if you guys are ready to see how I drew myself as a cartoon, please keep watching, and let's get started. And here I have my boyfriend's iPad. As you guys know, I don't have an iPad, so I just borrow my boyfriend's. Um, but he was nice enough to let me uh, buy Procreate here. So this is Procreate. As I mentioned before, I use it to make a lot of my SVGs, a lot of my stencils. I love using Procreate. It's so easy to do. It was only a one-time payment of $10. So if you ask me, it's very worth it. But it does only work on the iPad. So unfortunately, you will need an iPad if you want to use Procreate. So as always, I'm just going to open a new project. So over here we have this plus, so just click on it. And I like to just use screen size. And there we are. And here on Google, I just typed in cartoon craft logos and I went into the images. This way you can kind of see like an idea of what you want to go for. Um, if you want to be really cartoony, do like big head, um, little bodies. Or if you want to keep it more natural. And then also it lets you decide what you want to put in the hands if you want to include that. So here she has um, a glue gun and a t-shirt. And this person has a cup and a keychain. So it's just going to be based on what your business or channel does and what you want to include. If you've seen my other videos, when I use Procreate, I don't really freestyle. I just kind of trace because my drawing skills aren't as great as they used to be. Uh, but that's what's awesome about Procreate. We could uh, just trace and draw whatever we want. But once you have your reference images, now we just need an image of yourself. So I'm just going to go into my Instagram and download one from there. Okay, so here I'm back on Procreate. And now that we have a reference picture and the picture of ourselves, we are ready to draw. So I don't know a lot about Procreate. I've only been using it for a little bit. And I only really use the basics, but I'll show you guys what I know. And as you can see, I'm also wearing a glove. This helps with like the whole drawing. It just slides better on the iPad rather than just my hand. It gets like, see, it's not good. <laughs> so now to insert our first reference image, we're gonna go into the little tool here. Go to add, insert a photo. And here on our photos, we have our reference picture. So I'm gonna add the first one. So I like to utilize my whole workspace, so I'm just going to be flipping this, and by that I'm just holding it with two fingers and spinning it around. And I'm just going to make it as big as my screen, like this. Keep in mind that if you wanted to add the whole body, you would just kind of like put it on the top here, so then you have room to draw the body, and you would just need a reference picture for that. But I'm not going to draw that, it's just going to be half, so this should be okay. Here on the layers, we're just going to add another layer. And insert our next reference picture. Same way as before. And we're just going to be doing the same thing. And you don't have to add the reference pictures all at once. Um, it's just kind of like how you go as you need them. You can always just take them off uh, by unchecking the box. That means they show versus don't show. But I like to have everything there for me, ready to go. So I'm just adding all the images. And last image is of me. Now here in our layers, we can see we have all our reference images. And if we select them, they pop up. Um, now we're just going to add another layer. And I want to begin by tracing out myself first, since I'm like the main part of the image. So I'm going to select the layer where my image is at. And right now it's showing. 
right here in the end we click on it and in the opacity we're gonna minimize it just enough to where we can see and still be able to trace out okay so that looks good so now just make sure that you're in your fourth layer a clean layer where you're gonna do the actual outline for the tool here I like to use calligraphy and monoline just because I feel like it gives like the nicest most solid line I really haven't tried it many other brushes though so I'm sorry about that in monoline I do always in the stabilization I have the streamline all the way to the top just because it helps me a lot since my hands are very shaky um, you can see here it does very nice smooth lines over here we have the size of our brush so right here is the biggest size and down and if we move it all the way to the bottom it's the smallest size uh, this right here is the opacity, so once again, um, the opacity is all the way to the top. It's going to be the darkest, and all the way, and like in the middle, it's going to be less dark, and you know how that goes. Okay, now we can begin uh, tracing. So it does help to move your image around. This is what I love about the iPad. It's very um, convenient to work with. So I think I'm just going to start off with the face. And drawing in monoline, this is how thick the thinnest monoline was. So you could see it was too thick for what I wanted to make. The eyes were looking uh, too weird. So I actually found this line right here called Studio Pen. And same thing, I just went into Streamline and put it all the way to the max. And then that's what I used to draw this out. see here the hand that she has up and the one that is on the hip it's kind of switched to what my image is so I'm gonna go into my layers select on the layer where the reference image is click on that little arrow and we're just gonna flip horizontal once you're in this little arrow selection kind of place you can uh, move around your reference image so I'm just gonna line it up to my elbow so I can draw in the hand Okay, so I think this should be okay. And I'm going to go into the layer where I'm drawing, select my tool. And so far this is what I have if I remove the background image this is what we have right now it's just a really light sketch of my image I did want to add some nails to uh, my drawing so what I'm gonna do is and add another layer so a nice clean layer pick my pen and then just draw them out and if they're a little wobbly or weird looking you can always just go in and adjust And this is one of the reasons I like to do little details and stuff in different layers. That way I can go back and edit just that detail and not mess with the rest of my image. If I wanted to change the nails to pink, I just choose whatever pink it is that I want. And then same way I filled in the color, I'm just going to drop the color right there. Just make sure that you're on the layer that you're coloring. So. This way, you change the color of your nails very easily. This reference image, I didn't need it, so I'm just going to delete it. Now it's just about coloring it in. And so here, I just clicked on my reference image, and I'm going to select the layer that it's in. Now the arrow, and I want it to be really small. So I added another layer. And something cool in Procreate is that to choose our color, we can kind of just hold our reference image and you can see here it changes to whatever color you're holding it onto. So I'm gonna just be picking um, my main color so I'm just gonna click on like my forehead 
and right here I selected a color so that's gonna be one of my colors now we need a shadow color so I'm gonna like hover over like my cheek area and now I need a highlight and I'm gonna select my eyebrows just so I can get the color of them okay so here I did a little bit more color swatches and I just kind of got the color of my hair my face and my lips but it doesn't really matter what layer they're on um, you just kind of need them for reference and then we can delete them later and so I'm just gonna fill this in and I am gonna make my pen a little bit thicker Okay, so this is what I have so far. Um, I think we're getting there. I just want to show you guys an easy way to like do the highlights and the contours and stuff. Um, I'll show the arm. So I just added a new layer and now that I'm on that layer, I'm going to select the dark color. Here I'm in my brush and I'm going to use the soft brush. And I want my brush to be a bit big so it's like around 7% here. But I don't want the opacity to be too strong so it's just going to be low at 15. And then from here, it's very subtle but you'll start to like see all the contours and stuff it's okay if it goes over we can clean that up later but this has really helped when i'm doing all the like highlighting and stuff so just go over the parts that need the um, dark colors okay so that gave us a little bit now we're going to make it a little bit smaller make this a little bit darker and again, just go around here. And again, gonna get darker and smaller. And just go around. And it will take um, a little bit of playing around with it and then just adding more color, taking it away. This is why I say to put it on different layers. Um, if you don't like it, just delete that layer and try again. So right here you can kind of see how the pink is showing through the hair and everything. Um, that's why we put it on layers. So when we move it under the hand, it disappears. But like I said, when we're doing the heavy contours and stuff, it does smudge outside of your line. So what I do is just go in with my eraser, make sure that you're in your desired layer, and then just clean it up. I did have a little apple on my pen here since this has an apple. Um, but my boyfriend said I was gonna get sued <laughs> so I got scared and I just put a little heart um, But I was just scared. It was gonna look like a crayon, but hopefully it just looks like a stylus um, But whatever, that's okay. The last part is the hair. The hair it was really hard for me I tried a lot of different things. Um, what I did was I went on YouTube and I actually learned how to make my own brushes so I made a brush that looks like hair and that like helped me so much and so I'll show you guys really quick how I made the brush I just opened a new project but you could do it on the same project I just didn't really want to deal with all, all the layers and stuff um but it doesn't really matter uh, you just need a clean canvas on your first layer we're gonna make that background white so just drag over the color and I know it looks like it didn't do anything but um the layer is white now then from there we're gonna go into our brushes and then just select um a black line like that and we're just gonna do a bunch of random dots and I like to do kind of like a triangle shape just because when I did like the trial and errors I found that the triangle looks a lot better like hair and not really just a bunch of like lines so once you have that we're gonna go click here and copy now it's copied 
From there, we're going to go into our brushes. And in our brushes, we're going to select the plus right here to add a new brush. From here, we go into shape, click edit. And then here, we hit import and paste. Once it's pasted, we just take two fingers and click. And that way, it kind of like inverted the colors. Once this happens, just click done. Once we're here, you can see it, we're almost looking like hair, right? It's looking pretty good. So first, I'm going to start in the stroke path. And here in the spacing, I'm going to remove it. That way, they look more like solid lines. In stabilization, I always put my string line up just because, you know, it helps me with my jittery hands. And that's all I'm going to do right now. Um, like I said, I really don't know what all of them do. Um, but this looks like good hair, so this is what we were going for. And now we can go into About This Brush, give it a name, and Done and Save. Once you have your brushes, here I have two that I have made. The first one, um, I did bigger uh, black dots, and I didn't like it because it was looking too full. Like, it does kind of look like hair, but I didn't want it to be that full. The second brush I made was with these little dots in the triangle shape. And I called that one my highlight brush just because it looks like highlights and it looks really good. I'm, I was so amazed by it. Like, I feel like this looks like a lot better hair. So once I'm back into my project, it was really easy to do with the new brushes. So I think this looks really good. I'm actually pretty impressed. <laughs> um, I wasn't sure how it was going to come out. But I don't need these anymore. I'm just going to go in and delete them. Someone told me that if you remove the background, um, so then your image looks like this with no background and you save it like this, um, you're saving it without a background and then you just have your image. I did try this, but it didn't work for me. I still had to remove the background. Um, I don't know if I did something wrong or... Um, if my iPad doesn't do it, but um, they were using an iPad, so I don't know. So now we're just going to go into the little tool, share, and we're going to save as a JPEG. And so now we save image, and we have it ready to go for our business. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. It was so fun making this cartoon. I've always wanted to make it. I feel like it's a great uh, promo for your business. They look great and, you know, they're really fun to make. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And please also head over to my Instagram and my TikTok for a lot more pictures and videos of my work. And thank you so much for watching.